speak about issues of reproductive, maternal, newborn, and child health in Africa. Because we have a big problem of women dying while giving birth, of adolescents not address these issues with ease. Um, we, we think members should be empowered to speak about these issues without fear or favor. The capacity of the Parliament to be à l'aise when they express sur ces questions parce qu'il y a beaucoup de problèmes voir des femmes qui équipent les parlementaires pour qu'ils soient à mesure de bien défendre cette cause. So they, they will be able to communicate after that effective meeting. We shall be able to communicate to parliaments on uh, on how to bring on more members on board, especially those who sit on health committees. But we know we can. Qui, qui défend cette cause. Mais que, ce, que ces personnes soient dans les commissions santé ou pas. Uh, regards to sexual and reproductive health rights and then the speaker also is our champion she's one of the biggest champions we have uh, she speaks about issues of <coughs> from parliaments to look at issues of uh, people with disabilities not only with HIV because you know HIV comes from different things <coughs> qui a adopté la loi relative à la protection des, des personnes en Italie. La loi qui est sortie, euh, qui n'a pas encore une année. Et là, nous sommes en train de deux de maintenant pour les décrets d'application. Mr. Albawa, he works with the budget department. And we thought that as the speaker is coming, Mr. Albawa can also briefly talk to us. Je suis président de la coalition de la Guinée. I am the what? president of the coalition in Guinea. Okay, welcome. Merci de nous recevoir ce matin, de nous entretenir pour comprendre, échanger avec vous les différents aspects. Thank you for welcoming us and sharing with us on different issues. And the coalition she is mentioning is actually the coalition of civil society organization for the repositioning of family planning mm. in nine French-speaking countries in West Africa. Okay. There is a regional coalition, but there are national coalitions also together. Yeah. She is the president for Guinea. Il faut juste ajouter que les neuf pays francophones de l'Afrique de l'Ouest pour la planification, le positionnement de la planification familiale, ce sont ces pays qui sont autour de. Okay. Then there are nine countries, and there is a coalition in each country, and they from the also yeah. to form the regional coalition. Okay. Uh, Sikmaro Vedrago is from the coalition of Burkina Faso. Frankfurt again. So what the important things are very important. He is the vice president for the coalition of Burkina Faso with this person, but he is also the uh, chief finance officer of this project for the four countries. Okay. Yeah. Sano is the vice president for the coalition in Guinea. And, uh, he is the general secretary of the regional coalition for the nine countries. He is the deputy general secretary for the coalition in Niger. Sumaila Muru, coordinator of the coalition in Mali. <laughs> yeah, he is the national coalition coordinator for the coalition of Mali, like the expert in capacity building, supporting the coalition in Mali, coalition of Mali. My name is Soi Ibrahima Monekata. I am the director of the project. <coughs> I'm McDonald Simbereka from Malawi. I'm coordinating the projects in the southern and eastern Africa region. Yeah. 
making the connection is in West. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so, lui, il s'est présenté, il s'est bon de dire qu'en fait, c'est lui qui est le coordinateur de l'Afrique australe pour ce projet et qui fait le lien avec l'Afrique de l'Ouest. Voilà. Mais il est basé au Malawi. Once again, uh, I welcome you to the Parliament of Uganda. <coughs> and we are grateful to share with you our experience in mainstreaming gender and equity in the national budget. Um, my presentation is going to concentrate on the following uh, thematic areas. Donc, il va se focaliser pendant sa concentration, son, son intervention sur les euh, domaines thématiques. I will start giving you a small background of gender and the equity responsive budgeting in our country. Je vous donnerai un peu l'historique de l'arrière-plan de ce processus budgétaire associé au genre et à l'équité. And uh, why, we, why we should be interested in gender and equity budgeting generally? I will give you uh, the, the legal framework, policy and institutional framework that is governing uh, this uh, agenda. Then uh, we shall share the criteria which we employ in Uganda to assess uh, this uh, agenda. We shall discuss uh, what we have done so far in the country in this area of gender and equity mainstreaming. Uh, some of the recent gender equity assessment outcomes, we shall share what uh, the outcomes of the assessment for the year which we are in now. I also give you some highlights of some of the gender and equity interventions in the current financial year. The, prog the programs, yeah. and the, the role of our office, the parliamentary budget office, in supporting parliament. <coughs> and then we shall we shall conclude. So, uh, as a whole background. The motivation of gender and equity budgeting in Uganda was uh, basically from two uh, areas. One was external and another one was internal. External of, uh, from the experience outside Uganda and some factors were within Uganda. So, the experience has a link with the exterior but also with the interior. There were challenges at the internal of Uganda and also the situations in the environment outside of Uganda that have led to this logic. So, externally, the, initially, uh, this concept was majorly in South Africa and Australia. Um, during the United Nations Fourth World Conference of Women, uh, which was held in 1995 uh, in Beijing, China, uh, which we normally call the Beijing Conference. That's where most women leaders at that time got motivated to advocate for <coughs> issues of women and main, women mainstreaming. Uh, in very many aspects, political and social, economic. And during that okay, conference, so you need to go uh, to this so that I can. <laughs> so uh, the idea was uh, from South Africa and uh, Australia, where it was first conceptualized. Okay, so yeah. the idea uh, was conceptualized in part of the Africa of the South Africa, quickly. Mais son <coughs> plan est rattaché en fait à cette conférence, 4e conférence euh, euh, sur les femmes.
Beijing en 1995, que nous connaissons tous. Et à cette conférence de Beijing, au retour, beaucoup ont été euh, accompagnés ou renforcés pour qu'elles puissent euh, faire la promotion du genre même dans, le, dans la constitution même du pays. So uh, this undertaking is one of the progressive uh, achievements in Uganda uh, in respect of gender equality and empowerment of women, girls and marginalized groups. Donc, uh, uh, la promotion du genre de et la promotion des personnes vulnérables ou marginalisées, uh, c'est des choses qui ont découlé de ces initiatives. <coughs> so uh, we had the uh, like organization like the ones you lead uh, we call civil society organizations at that time uh, the one which was forum for women in democracy uh, basically initiated by the the women who were in the constituency assembly the one which uh, promoted, uh, was developing our constitution they formed that civil society organization to advocate for women and girls and the um, marginalized groups. So uh, by 1997, uh, this civil society organization started and raising the national budget to ensure that it addresses issues of gender and equity. So the association was from during the of the constitution process, right? So the women leaders who were behind the advocating for gender and equity, yeah. they formed this civil society Donc, organization. Maybe information. Donc, yeah. Qui ont participé à cette rencontre de Beijing et qui sont venus pour aider à promouvoir ces questions en rapport avec les femmes dans la constitution. Après ces exercices, on a mis en place une association de, qui a continué le travail de suivi budgétaire s'assurer que les besoins de ces femmes sont pris en compte dans euh, la priorité nationale. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe information. Mm. Uh, basically, majority of the organizations we are talking about gender budgeting, mm. they never considered equity issues. Mm. Yeah, the issue of equity w came in when we were making the Public Finance Management Act <coughs> with our initiation with the speaker of the Certificate of Gender and Equity Compliance. But most people we are talking about gen gen uh, gender budgeting, okay. not equity. Donc c'était la journée qui pour nous dire que beaucoup de ceux qui parlaient de genre dans le processus budgétaire, dans les politiques nationales, ne pensaient pas à l'aspect équité. Donc c'est avec l'action qu'elle a menée avec la présidente de l'Assemblée actuellement euh, que la dimension équité est venue dans les réflexions et dans les politiques. Yes, uh, so in 1998, uh, like this project you have, uh, for the, which was a civil society organization uh, spearheading this movement, uh, was supported by UNDP, Uni National, United Nations Development Program, uh, to undertake uh, this project in Uganda. Donc, uh, you say for that, right? The NGO, what's the name of the NGO? It was Forum for the, yes. Donc, Forum for National. Women in Democracy. Bon, ce forum là, donc, a été parlé, a été soutenu par les détenus. Donc, pour justement faire avancer ce agenda ici au niveau du pays, en Uganda. So, for they did uh, more work uh, in form of advocating for women and marginalized groups and providing for uh, intervention that address their needs uh, involved in capacity building of other smaller civil society organizations including government officials um, and in a partnership with the parliamentary budget office this work was carried forward through 2003 2004 and we started when 1997, okay. 98, they were funded by UNDP, yeah. and by 2003, 2004, yeah. a lot had been achieved. So, after 1998, concrètement, the financement was in 2003, and there were a lot of 
rapport qui a été coordonné par l'unité du Parlement avec cette association, avec justement cet appui de tous pour renforcer les organisations au niveau local, mais même les euh, responsables de l'État au niveau local pour prendre en compte les besoins et les spécificités des personnes handicapées et des personnes marginalisées. Donc, ils ont fait beaucoup de choses dans ce sens. So whereas the constitution was proper, pre, properly providing for uh, issues of gender and equity, um, government was not keen in the budgeting for these programs. So in 2003, 2004, <coughs> so it was in the year 2003 2004 that the government now fully adopted the gender responsive budgeting. Donc c'est en 2003 2004 que le gouvernement maintenant a adopté euh, un processus budgétaire qui prend en compte le genre. And it was included in the guidelines to ministries, departments and agencies as a requirement while budgeting. Donc euh, on appelle ça en fait la budgétisation sensible aux gens, quelque chose comme ça. Euh, it was what? You repeat that. You say it was... Uh... So, <coughs> the Minister of Finance would communicate to ministry departments yeah. to ensure that gender and the gender yeah. responsive budgeting is implemented. Okay, so the Minister of Finance se donne le devoir de vérifier avec ses collaborateurs des autres départements ministériels que les questions de genre sont prises en compte dans leur budget, dans le processus budgétaire. However, there was no, there was no law as enforcing this implementation. Mais le problème était qu'il n'y avait pas de loi qui rendait obligatoire l'application de ces dispositions. There were many other challenges. There was no capacity in the ministries. Uh, People would not understand what exactly to do. Donc, il y avait des problèmes de confusion. Il y avait dans les ministères des personnes qui sont là, mais ils ne comprennent pas exactement ce qu'ils doivent faire dans ce processus. So, people would say, if I put up a school, it is everybody will benefit from the school. <laughs> Donc, ils vont te dire, par exemple, mais si nous créons une école, c'est tout le monde qui bénéficie de cette école. And if I construct a road, everybody will use the road. Donc, ils disent, mais si nous faisons une route, tout le monde roule dessus. <laughs> so as we talk now, uh, we have uh, the we have a law called the Public Finance Management Act of 2015. <coughs> 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 So even uh, there was uh, a government body set up to operationalize the provision in the constitution regarding uh, equal opportunity and gender and uh, gender mainstreaming, including the people, uh, marginalized groups called the Equal Opportunities Commission. Donc, uh, le gouvernement a mis en place uh, une unité, uh, uh, la commission uh, égalité du genre. Et non, égalité des opportunités. Égalité des opportunités, commission. Commission, égalité des, des chances, oui, des chances, c'est ça. Donc le gouvernement a mis en place cette unité qui opère, et son rôle justement c'est d'aider les ministères à mieux appliquer ces choses. I will be giving you the legal framework that he established the Equal Opportunity Commission later. Donc plus tard, je vous donnerai le cadre législatif euh, par rapport à cette commission. Uh, we will be asking ourselves why are we talking about gender and equity. Donc, on va nous poser la question pourquoi nous parlons de 
Uh, you note that uh, the, the budget uh, is used as a tool uh, to influence social, economic, and political life of our uh, people. And what for people? The national budget yeah, is yeah. used as a tool to influence uh, social, economic, and political life okay. of our people. So if uh, the budget does not uh, provide for uh, interventions which benefit all, it would mean that uh, a number of women, men, and people uh, marginalized would not benefit from the national budget. So if the budget national is conceived and executed without taking into account the needs of everyone, we will see that there are women, women, and certain groups who are marginalized but are not taken into account. So uh, gender resource budgeting is important. It's the only way we can ensure that gender equity in, in our jurisdiction is promoted. So equity does not, it, it just means fairness when we are distributing resources. Quand on parle d'équité, il faut juste voir la notion de, de, de égalité, mais la notion de juste, juste, justesse. So it's about uh, justice in distribution of benefits, rights and responsibilities in society. Donc euh, la répartition des bénéfices, la répartition des droits euh, dans la société, euh, c'est essentiellement au sujet de cela. So when we talk about uh, equity, it means uh, we are ensuring that all the vulnerable groups are accessing or benefiting from government programs. Donc, quand on parle d'équité, on peut dire que tous les groupes marginalisés, même du pays, sont en train d'accéder aux programmes que le gouvernement finance. So. Bénéficier de ces programmes. And therefore, equality, when we say gender equality, you, you mean that you give equal opportunities to women and men uh, to participate and access uh, government services. So when you talk about equality, it's a lot more in relation to access to the post, to the responsibility and to the services of the government, for the women and for the men. So a gender issue, when we talk about a gender issue, because that's what exactly we address, you must know the gender issue. And what is the gender issue? It is this social indicator of inequality between males, females, boys and girls. So when we talk about gender, it's good to remember that we want to talk about the question of inequality, specifically between the men and the women, and in particular between the girls and the girls. It may, if we don't address it, it may result into either discrimination or marginalization. So gender and equity budget planning it means that uh, we are recognizing the different needs and interests of women and men, girls and boys, marginalized groups, regions or locations during the planning you have identified that these exist so you plan for them so gender and equity budgeting it doesn't mean you create a separate budget so we, we just mean that you do gender and equity mainstreaming uh, what it means that uh, you are addressing gender and equity within the policies that exist, within the budget that you have, within the services that you provide, 
uh, but not separate initiatives. Donc, il ne s'agit pas d'avoir des initiatives séparées nouvelles, mais il s'agit de s'assurer que les politiques qui existent déjà prennent en compte ces aspects de l'équité, les budgets qui sont adoptés pour concrétiser ces programmes prennent en compte ces besoins et les services auxquels les gens ont accès aussi dans les différentes structures gouvernementales respectent cette notion de généralité. For example, if the government has a program of constructing schools, then you are looking at schools for boys and schools for girls. The program is still the same, constructing schools, but you have to ensure that all the people are benefiting equally. Donc, c'est vrai, quand on met une école, par exemple, en place... Euh, to tell us uh, how they expect to uh, mitigate these challenges. Et ils doivent dire également que, quelles mesures d'atténuation ils ont euh, pour faire face à ces défis dans leur processus de gestion. And that car is 4%. Donc là, il y a 4 points. <coughs> Challenges are, are not just supposed to just be stated. We assess whether they, they are realistic challenges, because challenges cannot be the same year in, year out. So, it does not be for the minister just to describe the difficult simple like that, but they try to evaluate if these difficulties that are enumerated are realistic and are objective and pertinent. And because the difficulties also change from year to year, so it does not have to be the same year in year out. So on page on slide 28, I provide the objectives of gender and equity compliance, how they are assessed. Donc, les objectifs de l'évaluation sont indiqués à la page dans ce dans ce slide 28. What the assessment is supposed to attain? This is what I give on page slide 28. À quoi est-ce que l'évaluation aboutit? So the first objective of the assessment is to examine the extent to which vote mission statements objectives commit to inclusive growth in line with sector development plans. You assess the sector's objective and see if it intends to address issues of gender and equity. Donc, euh, euh, le premier ici c'est de voir est-ce que euh, le secteur, les objectifs du secteur concourent à la réalisation de l'objectif, des objectifs en fait définis dans le plan national du développement. Donc le but c'est de voir que tous les secteurs concourent à la croissance en fait euh, inclusive. You also assess, I've already taken this, so you assess whether uh, the ministries, department and agencies, when they are reporting back on performance of last year, are they reporting on the interventions that were addressing gender and equity and the resources that were earmarked for them? Donc, le deuxième aspect qu'ils examinent, c'est aussi dans le rapport des différents ministères. <coughs> on essaie de vérifier les dispositions ou les prévisions qu'ils avaient pour le genre et l'équité. Est-ce qu'ils ont mis en œuvre et euh, le rapport de la mise en œuvre en fait, de ces activités doit figurer? We also do assessment uh, whether the ministries, departments, and the agencies have allocated adequate resources to priorities that address gender and equity concerns. Donc, euh, il s'agit aussi pour eux d'examiner jusqu'à quel degré les ministères et les agences qui sont rattachés à eux ont alloué des budgets ou des ressources euh, euh, pour réaliser les résultats qui sont prioritaires et qui traitent de genre et d'équité de ces questions euh, voilà, pour les différents groupes. En slide 29, I, I give you uh, the other assessment objectives. Donc, il y a deux autres objectifs sur la page 29. Uh, we also assess whether the ministries, departments and agencies incorporate gender and equity in their targeted outcome indicators. Donc, dans les documents de planification du ministère de chaque département, ils essaient de voir les indicateurs qui sont là. -bas. Est-ce que parmi les indicateurs, il y a aussi des indicateurs qui mesurent les efforts en lien avec genre et équité? And the, um, 
It is a long list. Long, a long list. Yes, a long um, list. Pilar. So, uh, lastly, uh, you assess whether gender and equity challenges faced by the ministry departments in budgeting. Uh, you assess those challenges and also recommend on measures to correct the, the existing challenges going forward. Donc, euh, l'autre chose aussi qu'ils essaient d'évaluer, c'est de voir les défis auxquels les différents ministères sont confrontés dans le processus budgétaire et qu'est-ce qu'eux-mêmes ils recommandent comme action collective pour faire face à ces défis. You realize that uh, to achieve this, you need to do a lot more. You, for example, how do you ensure that the ministry that departments actually understand what to do mm -hmm. and which tools do you employ in order to do this assessment so on slide number 30 i am giving you what we have done so far in this effort okay. donc euh, on peut comprendre que c'est toujours un défi pour les ministères quand on reste au niveau conceptuel comme ça dans la pratique de savoir comment ils doivent opérationnaliser ces choses et donc il va commencer à partager avec nous les outils que eux mêmes ils ont produits et qu'ils utilisent avec les ministères pour les aider dans le processus de planification. Ok, to yes, add to what Minister Lowe is saying, uh, you know, this is a new initiative, as you know, but, and we are not learning from anywhere, we are learning from, from ourselves. So, the Minister of Finance, uh, together with uh, Macquarie University, Department of Gender, and the Minister of Gender, and the, uh, our task force, we, we passed out the first batch of trained trainers in gender and equity budgeting. So maybe they will be able to help ministries to us to do this kind of assessment. Thank you, Honorable. Ce qu'elle a indiqué comme ajout pendant qu'il continue, c'est que euh, dans leur logique de certificat qu'ils ont constitué, ils ont essayé de faire une formation avec un groupe de personnes déjà. Euh, pour qu'ils comprennent comment ça, on doit opérationnaliser ce concept dans les processus de planification budgétaire. Et je euh, pense que ça, ça c'est quelque chose qui peut aider cette formation pour l'exploitation de ces outils. So, uh, the <coughs> we <coughs> Eco Opportunity Commission uh, has come up with the what we call gender and equity compliance tools that guide ministries, departments, and agencies. So the first one is uh, the gender and the equity planning and the budgeting guideline for sectors. So this part is available to show them exactly what they have to do, how they have to ensure that <laughs> so when did you come to Kampala? <laughs> the 11th and the 12th. Oh, okay. Yes. You have some of you today? Yes. <laughs> anyway, welcome. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, right honorable speaker. Mm. We are so glad that you have got some time to come mm. and meet with us. Mm. The delegation you see uh, seated here yeah. is coming from West Africa, from mm. Mali, Burkina, mm. Niger, and Guinea. Mm. They are coming to benchmark okay. on our historical innovation. Mm. Me and you, the certificate of gender and equity ah, compliance. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. yeah, we are leading on the continent, yeah. and actually, specifically, they are working on sexual and reproductive health rights mm. programs. Mm. Uh, me, actually, as a member of parliament. Mm. I uh, also work with the human rights of women and girls with disabilities. Mm. So we have a common donor called Amplify Change. So that's how we got connections. Mm. I kindly request them to introduce themselves mm. to you so that you can know whom you are talking to. Okay. We start with the Vice Chair of Foreign Affairs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Mm. I'm also a good proponent of this gender and equity mm -hmm. certificate <laughs> okay. and, and a vice chairperson of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Madam, mm -hmm. 
Je n'ai pas pris la bonne place, c'est ça. <rire> Bonjour, Excellence. Bonjour. Euh, je, suis, je suis médecin. Je viens de la Guinée. Mon nom, c'est Dr. Bindu Bamba Bamboula. Je suis président de la coalition pays. Donc, comme il a dit. Non, je comprends. Donc, euh, c'est un plaisir pour nous d'être ici de bénéficier de vos expériences et aller reporter ça au niveau de nos pays parce qu'on n'est pas au même niveau. Donc c'est vraiment un voyage d'études, un voyage d'échange et un voyage d'apprentissage. Merci beaucoup et félicitations à vous. Bienvenue à Kampala. Bienvenue à Palermo. Merci. Pas de quoi. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I can see, yes. Because yes. it's actually present in the nine French speaking countries of West Africa mm -hmm. as national coalitions. And if you take the coalition of Mali only, mm -hmm. you have 55 civil society organizations in the only Mali coalition. Mm -hmm. So this is, if you take the picture of the nine countries, mm -hmm. it's a huge coalition that has been established by the Waterloo Partnership okay. to promote family planning. Mm -hmm. And the project is bringing the team here to mm. learn from your experience mm, mm. so that in the advocacy mm. uh, activities that are planned within the framework of this project, mm. they, are, they must be able to better work with national level, uh, parliament, mm. ministerial level, mm, mm. to push the agenda of sexual reproductive health mm, mm, mm. and uh, not to include that equity and uh, Gender mm, 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 mm. In the advocacy process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, okay. welcome. Yeah. First, uh, thank you for the honor to host. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're looking the land of the tall or upright people. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, we are happy uh, that we are here because we have something unique uh, which we uh, it took us uh, 11 years to get it into the law because uh, what we did was to uh, make it a condition that uh, all the laws all the policies all the programs 
must have a, co a component of uh, gender and equity. So as I said, it was resisted very much until uh, it went into one of our, the Public Finance Management Act. So the, within the first year, the Minister of Finance tried to bring an amendment to remove that requirement for compliance. So we told him that uh, if you try, you don't come back here for the business. Your budgets, your other things, don't come back here. Donc nous lui avons dit que si vous essayez d'enlever ces provisions là, vous ne revenez plus ici avec votre budget. He was trying to avoid responsibility. Donc il voulait éviter sa responsabilité. So now it is his work, and uh, I'm happy that now this last night I was reading letters from the Minister for Gender writing to the energy minister, writing to the finance minister, saying, how have you prepared? Where, where, is the, where are there no roads in this place? Why can't the women reach the hospital? What is happening? So I'm really glad that's now what is happening. Finance, gender. So it's a very good uh, tool for accountability. A very good tool well, for accountability. So I hope that the uh, my uh, members will give you our the publications by Equal Opportunities Commission, a commission which is a, whose work it is to ensure equity in society. Okay. So the rest, I think, my members will, uh, will interact with you. I'm sorry, I, I have to go because the house is in session, so I have to go downstairs. Oh, of course, of course. Okay, I'll do it Excellence, Okay. 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 I want to take this opportunity to give you the research. Okay. Uh, women, uh, human rights of women and girls with disabilities oh, has done okay. on sexual and reproductive health rights. Okay. Actually, also asking for gender and equity sensitive budgeting at local governments. Okay. And also at national level. Oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. We're making progress. Yes. Are we all in the photo? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can I? Yes. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, so glad. Are you visible? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Enjoy your stay. Okay, thank, thank you very much. And come back soon, eh? Yeah, For a holiday. No one. Okay. 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 Le budget adopté et leur processus d'évaluation montrent que euh, la conformité est à 115%.
So that means that uh, <coughs> about 25% uh, of the MDAs do not have their objectives conforming to GNE. Donc cela signifie, on peut dire que à peu près 20, 25% des ministères ou des plans de ces ministères-là ne sont pas conformes aux exigences déjà éditées. And uh, it was established that out of 142 <coughs> votes, a vote is like a, a ministerial department of government. Uh, they, their strategic objectives were at least 80%, meaning that uh, about 56% of the entire ministry departments and agencies have their objectives conforming to G and E at 80%. Ok. Donc, si vous prenez euh, les votes ici, ils disent, ce sont des, si vous prenez les différents ministères et leurs départements associés tout ensemble au niveau national, vous vous retrouvez avec 142. Et quand on évalue ces 142, les objectifs stratégiques qui sont euh, au niveau de ces différents plans, on peut trouver que au moins 56% de ces différents ministères ou structures évaluées ont euh, une conformité de 80%. C'est-à-dire plus de la moitié des institutions a une conformité qui s'aligne 80%. Le score. Oui. So slide the <coughs> Some of the uh, results of the assessment uh, Represented, for example, the leur unité au sein de l'Assemblée. Mm -hmm. what, what slide is that again? Slide 49. Uh, donc, on nous sommes slide 49 maintenant. This is the second last page. Right. Yes. Uh, the parliamentary, there are very few countries in Africa which have the parliamentary budget office. Actually, Uganda was the first country in Africa to set up a parliamentary budget office. Donc, il n'y a pas beaucoup de pays en Afrique qui ont un budget, disons, un bureau au sein du Parlement exclusivement dédié au budget. Maintenant, l'Ouganda a été le premier pays à mettre en place, en fait, ce, ce bureau. Donc, cette unité, je ne sais pas comment... Le département. Le département, oui. En tout cas, l'unité qui charge de budget. Oui. Donc, so, do we have somebody from Liberia here? Non. Elle demande si nous avons quelqu'un du Libéria ici. Au Libéria, ils ont un budget office. Au Libéria, ils en ont. Ghana, has set up. Ghana vient d'en avoir. Kenya, has. Kenya en a. Uh, then Zambia. Zambie aussi en a. South Africa. L'Afrique du Sud. Malawi. Malawi. Tanzania. Tanzanie. And in Morocco, yes, they have. And Nigeria, they have some department function like the budget office. Donc ils ont, Maroc et puis Nigeria ont quelque chose qui ressemble à ce, cette unité, mais ce n'est pas exactement la même chose. So the, and the budget office is set up by a law, an act of parliament. Donc il faut noter que cette unité-là dont on parle doit être mise en place à, sur la base d'une loi, so, votée par l'Assemblée nationale même. We are comprised of economists and budget analysts. Donc nous sommes constitués d'économistes et d'analystes budgétaires. So we have members of parliament and the committees to understand all these issues. Donc notre travail c'est d'aider les membres du, du parlement, euh, donc les députés, à comprendre ces questions là. So in this case of gender and equity, we carry out what we call the legal and gender equity compliance audit. Donc no, une de notre euh, responsabilité c'est de faire l'audit de conformité, disons de ces différents budgets. Euh, par rapport aux certificats et aux critères. We also ascertain, for example, the credibility of this certificate. Donc, mm. il, il se prononce même sur la crédibilité du certificat qui a été signé par le ministre des Finances. Yes, the ministry will issue the certificate, <laughs> but we shall ascertain whether the certificate is credible. Donc, <laughs> même si le ministre a envoyé le certificat avec le budget pour dire que le budget est conforme, the... eux, ils évaluent encore pour vérifier est-ce que ce certificat est crédible. Like the Honorable told you that the issues of equity have not been addressed. So if the gender certificate is saying 
80%, we assess whether this 80% is genuine. Donc, comme euh, l'honorable l'a dit, si par exemple le budget dit que 80% des besoins sont pris en charge, eux, ils vérifient est-ce que cela est réel et conforme à ce qui est la réalité dans le budget. C'est dans compte des paramètres. Actually, to emphasize what Minister Lowe is saying, the law, the Public Finance Management Act, I think it is Article 9, Part 6, 1 or 2A. It says that the certificate must show how the budget has, has addressed issues of women, persons with disabilities, um, you know, all those groupings. So actually what he's saying would be another step for us to issuing the certificate is one thing, but is it genuine? Is it talking to the law? What is in the law? Oui, c'est une chose d'avoir le certificat, mais est-ce que le certificat concrétise effectivement le fait que le budget prend en compte les provisions de la loi qui indiquent les groupes spécifiquement et est-ce que les besoins réels de ces groupes sont vraiment pris en charge et vérifient ça So, I have, I have concluded the, the expedient hearing and uh, I want to say that uh, Uganda has really uh, achieved great strides in as far as the and the response budgeting is concerned. It started a long time when it was a very new concept. The capacity has been built slowly within the ministries and departments and because of uh, the, the fact that parliament here has this technical department, over time we have been engaged in uh, induction and the uh, capacity building seminars. Uh, to make sure that the issues uh, regarding the gender and equity budgeting are understood. But there are challenges like I've uh, shared. Donc ici, il faut juste dire que par rapport à ces questions de genre et qui était l'Ouganda a fait beaucoup de progrès. Les sensibilisations au niveau des ministères, au niveau des parlementaires, donc la compréhension du cadre légal. De, du cadre institutionnel et euh, l'impact justement de ces changements, ces politiques. Beaucoup a été fait, mais il y a quand même beaucoup de défis qui, qui perdurent, qui restent. Excuse me. Uh, one thing, maybe which uh, uh, Mr. Boa has not mentioned to you, we have a, another law called the Budget Act. Uh, it is so important to guide the budgeting process. One thing the Budget Act has is the budget calendar. I think even in your countries, yeah. you have a calendar. Because it helps you to see what happens at what time, yeah. then when can civil society comes in, because you know with advocacy, it is normally one thing which is very important is time. You can come with a very good advocacy strategy, but when it is late, so the budget calendar is so crucial and also budget transparency like uh minister of financial those economic big words <laughs> yeah so the citizens ordinary citizens don't understand them but we must find a way of simplifying them so that they can be brought on board donc ce qu'elle a ajouté ici c'est que quand euh Prenez le budget. C'est vrai que nous avons parlé de cette loi par rapport aux finances au niveau national, mais il y a une loi qui réglemente le processus budgétaire lui-même et qui précise le calendrier. Dans ce calendrier budgétaire, je ne sais pas si c'est le terme exact, dans le calendrier budgétaire, à quel moment euh, les ministères doivent faire leur travail, à quel moment c'est centralisé au niveau du ministère des Finances, à quel moment le ministère envoie au niveau de l'Assemblée, l'Assemblée doit faire un retour pour qu'on arrive à un budget finalement validé et qui est appliqué. Donc elle dit que dans ce processus, le temps est important. Parce qu'on peut venir avec une bonne idée, mais si l'idée est venue en retard sur le calendrier, c'est parti dans l'eau. Donc il faut aider le, la société civile à comprendre ce mécanisme. Ça c'est une chose. Mais la deuxième chose qu'elle a évoquée, c'est la transparence budgétaire. Donc parfois on est avec des documents techniques qui ont des termes que le citoyen ordinaire ne comprend pas. Maintenant, s'ils doivent faire un plaidoyer sur la base de ce document, c'est un problème. Donc, leur gouvernement ici, le ministère des Finances, a 
conçu un document certifié qu'ils ont intitulé « Know your budget connaître, »,« Connais ton budget ». Donc, dans ce document, ils ont essayé de simplifier des termes techniques compliqués et de présenter les données de sorte que les citoyens ordinaires puissent comprendre. Donc, elle dit qu'il y a beaucoup d'efforts, justement, qui doivent continuer dans ce sens pour que les compréhensions des citoyens soient bien et qu'ils aient accès aux données qui leur permettent de faire le, processus, le plaidoyer dans le processus. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mr. Lwawa wants to go because his team is leaving him. I also want to see whether I can dip into plenary. So he's saying that he gave you his card. If for any questions, you can, you can ask him. Also, he has so many documents, especially the assessment documents from the Equal Opportunities Commission which are on the soft uh, on soft copies mm -hmm. so you can always email mm -hmm. i have yeah. seen you have got yeah. Yeah. you give us the emails clearly mm -hmm. so that he can send you the soft copy and he communicates through my email mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a lot uh, even the, the law itself the public finance my main mm -hmm. act mm -hmm. yeah. though they are online but i can still send them okay. mm -hmm. Donc, lui, il doit se retirer bientôt parce que son équipe aussi doit partir pour euh, quelque part. Et il rassure que, comme il nous a distribué ce contact, on peut communiquer directement avec lui, mais il va nous envoyer les versions électroniques des documents qu'ils ont évoqués ici, afin que nous puissions les avoir sous la main. C'est ça, ok. So, um, yeah, I will give your my. I will contact you yes. so that we can coordinate. I would like to thank Mr. Roa so much. Je voudrais bien uh, remercier M. Uh, William. What William. 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 Yeah. Merci, <laughs> President. You know, I did the French up to Singapore. <laughs> and I passed. <laughs> but I have forgotten. <laughs> anyway, uh, wh wh what we, we are still checking out with the public relations office, if you can be taken around the building. Yeah. Then Florence will be taking you over okay. for lunch, mm -hmm. and then for me, I'll be joining you when we are going to the Minister of Finance. Okay. Thank you very much. Can we have a picture? You can go. Give me. You can go there. Mchala, uwabantu wabaliko ulemu, mugwanga yona. Uwai tuse nse, speaker wa Uganda, okubeira nga atuwa dakade, okusinka na delegation, evu de West Africa. Mwonsi eze Mali, Jine, Nija, ne Burkina Faso. Baze wano, nga baze okulaba kuchintu chetu hata andika. Nange cheni na mumu kono, che, echa Certificate of Gender and Equity Compliance. Na chita andika ange chokusaga, nengende wa speaker, ne tukola gane nze, nalisoka kuloza ku Certificate of Equity. Na ye speaker, nenga loza ku Certificate of Gender. Kane tugata wamu, ne tukola Certificate of Gender, and equity compliance. Tuwa wagiru wanyo, Ministry of Finance, uh, mwami Kenneth Mugambe, ne mchala Margaret Kakande, uopa ne parliament yo na, eye parliament yo muenda. Kateteka liya Public Finance Management Act, wedi ya lili ita, ensongenu ne tujiteka mu. Ne ensongenu, etade Uganda ku map, kubanga, uh, ensi nyingi nyo, ezili na enkola, eyo kulabanga zikola ku gender and equity issues, Ni hata tezina teka wo, strategy za kuteka bintu bino mungkola. Babi yogira kombi wandi kumu mateka, ni teba nabi teka mungkola. Kanonwe nsongeyo, um, banabantu, ni nechi bina chengkola na chochi baita Human Rights of Women and Girls with Disabilities. Chini naba funders, naba funders, naba funders, naba funders, banu, ababa ntuba na abazo kufe West Africa. Baba gamba nti, Mwemba mwaga lukutusa ensonga za haba chala haba lima haba kadebo na haba antu haba ulichika Mubajeti zensi za hawe Baje wano baku watagane na hange Nsoburo kubeda nga matuala mbitongole vya government Balabe ngeri jetu chikola mu ne mparlament wano So tupadewo speaker na tubulida Echigenda maso 
natuwa ni subi, tiensonge no mu Uganda, etambu zidwa bulunji. Dwa kubanti, era mchari mu obulumira, abantu wabukuteke bintu bino mungkola, na draba ministry zezenja ulo. Beta go kuongelo kusome sebwa. Mwetu watu wogela kusonga za gender and equity, tuwa dada tutegeza achi. Era budget process ya Uganda wetandika, ensonga zilo zinza kuteke wa muzitia. Ate kusaidi ya civil society, Bana Uganda baso mesedua batia, naba ntubo mu West Africa baso mesedua batia, okubeda nti babeda part of this process. Kari ensongeno yetuba deko, tusubida nti bana fava the West Africa, baja kutu yigirako, na waba gendeba la venti, ensonga za abantu wa abuzabu lichika, abantu wa abulichika, zige na mbajeti zensi za we, muju kila nti sustainable development goal, waba namba tane igamba, obutaleka muntu ye nama viga. Leaving no one behind. Uh, to subida antiera, Uganda eriku rugendo orok transforminga from a low income to a middle income status. Singa tu kozesa echi intu chajenda and equity budgeting. Tuwali muntu waja kusiga la mavega. Yane transformation. Ibuenewa ange ibadewo. Ijakube iranga buli omu. Alipata and person.